Hola, and welcome to Spanish Answers, episode 37. I'm your host, Sarah with Language Answers, and today's cultural tip is the first cultural tip regarding Mexico. So remember, with these cultural tips, we will have three regarding each Spanish-speaking country. We are leaving Spain, and now we're moving on to Mexico. So all of the information I'm going to talk about came from the CIA World Factbook, with the exception of pesos. I know that the World Factbook somewhere has the currency for the country, but I just couldn't remember where to look for it. So I did go to a different site. Again, all of the resources I used for this episode will be in the show notes, so you can find the links there. Anyways, the currency that Mexico has is the pesos, and just looking at the link, you can kind of see what the money looks like, and it's pretty, pretty money kind of reminds me a little bit of euros, if we're being honest, just a little bit. Anyways, going back to the CIA World Fact book, Mexico, or as it's officially known, the United Mexican States, or Los Estados Unidos Mexicanos, it's located in Central America, just south of the United States. There are about 128.6 million people there, and the majority of them, about 82.7%, are Roman Catholic. Now, Spanish is the main language spoken by, I mean, pretty much a huge majority, although there are also numerous indigenous languages. And actually, another link, sorry, I forgot about this when I was first starting this episode, but another link I have is to an article by the World Atlas, and they talk about how many different languages are spoken in Mexico, which I found fascinating. So they say that there are 68 recognized national languages by the Mexican government, and of those, 63 are native. So it's quite a lot. Now, you could get into the whole argument of, you know, are there more languages and are they how are they grouping them and all of that, but that that is a little bit beyond the cultural topic today. So anyways, you can go to the link and they have a list of the native languages and how many speakers there are per language in Mexico. I highly recommend that you check it out. It was really cool. To kind of summarize it just a little bit, the biggest language is Nahuatl, which is then followed by Yucatec Maya and then Mixtec. And I apologize if I've butchered any of those. Going back to our Mexican statistics, so we already talked about how the Mexican peso is the currency. The type of government that Mexico has is called a federal presidential republic. Now, the U.S., according to the CIA Factbook, is a constitution-based federal republic. But my understanding is that both Mexico and the U.S. have a federal republic where you have an overarching federal government. You've got also representative government, right, so it's a republic, but you also have power divested to the states as well. So it's not just one country government, you've also got the states, so federal and state government. Now, now from what I have read and understood, the fact that Mexico is a federal presidential republic, the presidential part shows that there's a strong executive branch that is not answerable to the legislative branch. It's separate from them as well. So what my take on that is that just the executive branch has a lot more power and authority than, say, the executive branch here in the U.S. Moving on, the capital is Mexico City, also known as La Ciudad de México, and Mexico has 32 states, estados, and it also has four time zones. One of their major national holidays, kind of like our July 4th, is their Independence Day. So September 16th is their Independence Day. They declared themselves free of Spain back in 1810. Some interesting facts I found on the CIA Factbook is that their national anthem is the Himno Nacional Mexicano, and it was written by Francisco González Bocanegra. The interesting thing that I found with this is the lyrics were written by him. I think the music was written by Jaime Nuno Roca, but with the lyrics, at least according to the CIA World Factbook, it was adopted in 1943, and it's known as Mexicanos al Grito de Guerra, or translated Mexicans to the war shout, or to the war cry. Now. According to tradition, Francisco González Bocanegra was, basically he didn't want to submit lyrics for a national anthem contest, and his fiance told him, oh no, you're going to, locked him in a room, and would not let him out until he had finished the lyrics. I don't know if this is true, it kind of sounds like one of those myths, you know, that every country has, but I really hope it is. I really, really hope that's true. 
I have a sudden interest in finding poetry written by Francisco Gonzalez Bocanegra and reading it because that, that's just a fantastic way to go fiance. Anyways, the flag is red, white, and green, and it has an eagle standing on a cactus eating a snake in the middle uh, on the white strip. So it's strips, right, of red, white, and green, eagle in the middle. And basically, this is representative. The eagle kind of represents the legend surrounding Mexico City, which is that the Aztecs, who originally built it, they were supposed to live in a place where they saw an eagle standing on a cactus eating a snake. So they found an eagle, according to the legend, and in that area they built a great city and that became eventually Mexico City. So there you go. A little bit of fun facts for you. That pretty much concludes our first fun fact of Mexico and in our next episode we'll talk a little bit about their national holidays. So let's go ahead and get started with the episode. Today's episode is all about filler words or connecting words. In Spanish, these are called muletillas. So las muletillas. Now, today we're going to do part one. So we'll do the first 10 filler words here. When you're speaking conversationally in any language, you always are going to have filler words like um, well then, so, however, on top of that, you know, things like that. And if you can pepper your conversation with native words or native sounding words in Spanish, it'll make you sound that much more fluent, it'll make you sound that much more smooth and flowing rather than a little stilted, and it just sounds more natural, it sounds better. And quite frankly, it's fun! I really enjoyed the research for this episode. Some of the words that I'm using here are ones that I use myself, either all the time in speech, perhaps in written form, but also I've done a lot of review of different websites and I've included them in the links. There's been four main ones I use and just did a cross comparison between them on what words they listed and how they use them and combined that all to give you this episode as well as the future episode. So all in all, we'll do about 20 filler words, but for today, we'll just focus on the first 10. Let's get started. Our first word is bueno, which can be used as well, or good, or sure, or okay. For example, when you're trying to think, you might say this word first and just extend the E sound, like bueno, and it gives you time to think, kind of like well. For example, Juan, ¿sabes cuándo empieza la película? Bueno, no estoy seguro, pero pienso a las dos. You can also use it for being in agreement with someone. Example, ¿Quieres ir a la fiesta? Bueno, sí, me parece genial. If you don't quite agree with someone, you can also use it as kind of a, well, it's not that bad. Él está malo. Bueno, no es tan tan terrible. You can also add pero to show exasperation. For ejemplo, no quieres ir a la biblioteca, pero bueno. Kind of like a well then. Our second word is pues, and it has a lot of similar use with bueno. So you can use it when you're trying to think. We'll use the same sentence we did before. Juan, ¿sabes cuándo empieza la película? Pues, no estoy seguro, pero pienso a las dos. You can also use it to kind of say, well then. For example, no puedo hacer mi tarea sin mi libro. Pues deberías haberlo traído. You should have brought it. Well then. The third word is entonces. And this can mean then, as in consequently or at that time. For example, si yo estudio, entonces tendré éxito en mi examen. I use it more often in writing, but you can also use it in speech as well. It can also be so. Entonces, ¿quieres preparar la cena? Kind of like a, all right, well then let's keep going with the conversation. Our fourth word is así que. It's similar to entonces in the sense of using it as so. For example, ¿te gusta la comida picante? 
así que te gustan los jalapeños? You could also say, así que bueno. So that means, so anyways, or so yeah. For example, fuimos a la escuela y estábamos jugando en el edificio cuando nos llamó. Y así que bueno, eso es todo. So kind of like a final summary, that's how, you, how it is, that's how it went, that's all. You can also say, así que nada, which is very similar to that, but it's a little bit more negative. El perro me mordió. Así que nada, ya no me gustan los perros. You can also add a little bit more to that. Así que nada más. And that just kind of means, so that is it. For example, ella dijo que ponerle los cuernos a Pablo. Así que nada más. Ya no la quiere ver. Number five is vale, which is my personal favorite. I learned this one in Spain, and it's basically the equivalent of our like or okay. So kind of how in English you have those friends who are always saying like, I went to the store, like, okay, like, and it can be a little bit much. Vale is the equivalent of that in Spain. I had one professor who used it all the time. I mean all the time. But it's definitely peppered throughout the conversation of most people, at least in Sevilla. For example, no me gusta este juego. Vale, ¿qué quieres jugar? Vas a lavar los platos, ¿vale? Yo sé, pero vale, es que no quiero hacerlo. Word number six is a ver. And it's basically, let's see. So, a ver, ¿qué podemos hacer viernes? You could also pronounce it, a ver, ¿qué podemos hacer viernes? Let's see. You can also say, vamos a ver, in basically the same manner. Vamos a ver, ¿qué son nuestras opciones? And, if you're getting fed up, you can also use vamos a ver as kind of a, all right then, hey, vamos a ver, decide ya. Number seven is, ¿sabes? You know? Solo quiero un trabajo, ¿sabes? Or, you can add a K and say, you know what, basically, you use sabes and sabes que the same way you would in English. You know and you know what? Sabes que voy a convertirme en ermitaño. You might say this because of the year 2020, right? I'm going to become a hermit because 2020 has been a bit of una locura. Anyways, number eight, mira. Basically, it's just look. Mira, no sé qué piensas, pero no toques el perro. Mira, look, hey. Number nine, oye, is used in pretty much the same manner. It's basically just listen, hey. For example, amiga, oye, no debes llevar este vestido, no te va bien. And last, but certainly not least, is number 10, SK. Now, SK is good for explanations and rationalizations. It means it's just that or the thing is, por ejemplo, ¿Todavía no has terminado tu tarea? Es que no puedo concentrarme. Just as a little bit of a bonus, we have a and e. In English, we might say when we're surprised or if we need a little bit of time to think of something, we go, oh, oh, things like that. Well, in Spanish, they don't say Oh, they say, ah, ah, and instead of saying, um, they might say, eh, por ejemplo, ¿Dónde está ella? Ah, oye, olvide decirte, ella no va, está enferma. ¿Quién fue el primer presidente? Eh, no sé. If you go to the Joy of Language link that I've included in the show notes, Katie has a fantastic interview with Nacho where they basically use a ton of these fillers. I highly recommend that you listen to it and check it out. They also have a great interview discussing these different fillers. That's all for today. Please don't forget to check out the show notes for notes and or links to resources used for this episode. This episode was brought to you by Language Answers Limited. If you're looking for a Spanish to English translator, someone to edit or review your documents, 
or would like tutoring, you can email me at contact at languageanswers.com. That's contact at languageanswers.com. Or visit my website, www.languageanswers.com. You can also send me your questions or topics you'd like me to discuss in a podcast episode. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in two weeks.